So inshallah, today we'll try to finish uh, chapter 10 of the grammar and then chapter 11 on Sunday and then we'll be done with the grammar. And then I want one more week, last week, to review some key things as far as grammar is concerned. And as far as tafsir is concerned, um, I think we're almost done. But I want to mention today, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Ahmaduhu wa usalli ala rasulil kareem, amma ba'd some very important and critical things in terms of understanding Surah Al-Kahf. And in fact, it's so important that I'm going to, uh, well, okay. <clears throat> so what is the message of Surah Al-Kahf? Like the big picture message. The big picture of Surah Al-Kahf, the message is there are two things Sutil Kahab tells us to do. And there are two things Sutil Kahab tells us to stay away from. Two situations to stay away from. And two things to do. The first and the last. Ashab al Kahab and Sul Qabnain. These are two goals to reach and two different stages of the same goal. And this has been the goal of every prophet, and this has been the method, the overall methodology of every prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, find yourself a refuge where you can practice your deen. Number two, establish the deen, establish the justice. Zulqanain is the man who establishes the justice. The person who is going to be a perfect picture of this. In fact, almost in the same area, he will be having his wars and so on. And so. It will be a perfect picture of this. Will be who? The Mahdi. Okay? The Mahdi will be, as the Prophet said, وسلم, a man who will bring justice. Just as much before that, there was tyranny. Just as much as there was tyranny at one time, he will bring back justice. So it starts with fatwa in nahum fityatun. Fatwa is manlihood, manliness. You know, because the the men of the ummah have forgotten what it means to be men, and so and there's many reasons for that. This is a long conversation in itself, but you know, uh, easy way to put it is there's not a single syndicated program on TV except men are mocked and shown to be. Uh, dumb, like uh, I'll give you some examples. Uh, look at uh, what's that cartoon? Uh, Bart Simpson, right? Bart Simpson, the cartoon, who's smart? The girls are smart, the guys are dumb. You take, uh, you know, um, you take Bill Cosby, uh, you know, Bill Cosby is dumb, his son is dumb, and the women, they're smart. You take I Love Raymond, or you take any of these other syndicated programs generally, they all show that what? They all show that the men are, um, you know, incapable of doing anything. And I remember there was a sister who said to me a statement, and I was like, oh, that's subhanAllah, that's interesting. She said, I never knew. She said, I always took guys as a clown. I always took guys that, you know, their role is to just be like clowns. Until I started coming, after I became Muslim and started coming to the masjid. When I started coming to the masjid, I started seeing, oh, okay, you know, men also have a role in society. Otherwise, I've actually had uh, one sister who took classes in, in anthropology. She would ask me quite often, she's like, what is the role of men? What is it that men do? So anyway, you know, this this confusion because you know guys have created a mess for themselves and uh, they've created such a mess they've even confused the women um anyway the point being is fatua by the way uh let me show let me show all of you very quickly that i don't know if i introduced any of you to the idea of fatua but fatua is an islamic part of the islamic tradition of 
So innahum fitiyat. Remember the fatwa, fitwa, the fitya are discussed in uh, with the men of the cave. So let me just uh, show you. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly say also that the food nowadays it's uh, designed to decrease testosterone levels. You know, the, all the food items that, that, that you eat they suppress testosterone. So men, even physically, they're becoming uh, more like women. Mm. Sheikh, there's yes. no voice. Oh. And he says that the chivalry of the elect of the elect, right, is with their spirits, is that they sacrifice their spirits. Right? Sure, can you start from the to beginning? What is pleasing to their beloved. Yeah, it's, it's soprano the home. And we buy expensive clothes. And we buy expensive this and expensive that. And we complain about a small nominal fee, right? Just in order to have a program exist. This is horrible. That chivalry is, is that we learn to prefer others over ourselves <coughs> with our wealth. <coughs> and he says the chivalry of the elect is with their nufus, it's with their souls. Is that they <coughs> they sacrifice their souls? And he says that the chivalry of the elect of the elect, right, is with their spirits. Is that they sacrifice their spirits, right, in order to do what is pleasing to their beloved, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then that we will end on this note. Is that another definition from Manazil is Sa'irin? Is that Fatuwa is to not see, and this relates to what was previously said, that you have any rank or bounty over anyone else, and that you don't see yourself as having any right over anyone else. And he says that it is of three de degrees. The first degree is, is that you don't allow yourself to argue. That you have, you're chivalrous, you don't allow yourself to fall down to the lower level of other people, right? To argue. If you see people make mistakes, it's that you don't be nitpicky and focus on those mistakes, that you refrain and you're chivalrous. You don't nitpick for people's mistakes. And then when this adiyya is that you cause yourself to forget other people that harm that, that was done to you. You teach yourself to forget. Is that if you're always remembering, always remembering, yes, it might have been bitter, yes, it might have been horrific. But if, if you want to attain the higher levels of chivalry, is that you have to learn how to forget harm that was done to you by other people. That's all the first degree. Adarajathaniya. Is that, and taqrab, and tuqarrab man yuqseek. Is that you bring near those who people who distanced you. Wa tukram man yuqseek. And you honor those that harmed you. And you seek forgiveness for those who are oppressing you. Samahan la qadman. Out of truly for being forgiveness from your nature. Not because you're holding a grudge in your heart. Then the highest of degrees. Allah ta ta'alak fil masir bi dalil wa la tushub ijabatuka bi iwad wa la taqaf fi shuhudika ala rasam. This is very difficult. I don't even know how to translate all of this. That this is a very a high degree of spiritual refinement. Is that you know that that you are only worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because He deserves to be worshipped, and that you want to have a pure witnessing to wa Taala and nothing that relates to that any lower desire of your own self. These are just uh, windows into this this great trait. But as you can see, that where are the people that embody it? And that despite that, we still have to learn the theory, and we still have to call ourselves to action. And that if we reflect upon these virtues, and we reflect upon in a very practical way, that different stations or different times where we could exemplify this virtue, what that will do for you is that when you are in that particular situation, is that you might, re you might, re you might recollect that what you thought about previously. And then if Allah gives you tawfiq and you trust in Him, He might give you that virtue in that particular moment. And if you continue doing that time and time again, that <coughs> nothing is preventing you from being chivalrous 
in all of your uh, different states. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, that's uh, from my uh class this morning, I believe. But what I want to share with you right now is that there is a Telegram channel that I want you all to be part of. And you can get the information for that for those of us who are interested in uh, in saving Islam in the future and having a counter resistance to the Great Reset uh, or having a counter resistance to the Dajjalic system, then join us in the channel in Telegram. And if you don't have Telegram, download Telegram and become part of this channel. I'll have the information in the description and also that way we can share uh, information and coordinate things together because like-minded Muslims need to come to each other so also share this is why in this particular talk I'm talking about the agenda the practical agenda Sultan gives us where to start start with Futua start with becoming real men you know and uh, or real women okay the real people of Allah Okay. And then what do you do? How, you know, what is the jama'ah do? What are the collective goals? What are the things that you have to be careful about? So I talk about this in this talk to some degree. And so uh, this talk uh, deals with some aspects that are, you can say, priority issues for the Muslims in the times to come. Okay. So, uh, inshallah, bismillah. <laughs> يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحسي ثناء عليك أنت كما ثنيت على نفسك فلك الحمد حتى ترضى The war cries of Sayyidina Khalid in gatherings they save to ultimately the language of duality it indicates some to our dear sister Bury in the sand I'm sort of her buried and شديد or maybe it's the cold, the weather, the elements that is Turned the camels away from the place that they need to be, which is with me to rescue me from the oppressive state that I'm in. Huh? That's Husna Vun. She's having a good opinion of the camels. Huh? But unfortunately, she does not have a good opinion of men. Amir Rijal Jutha men Koruda. She says, or are men, statues sitting, doing nothing in the hour of need. And that's something that calls out to each and every single one of us as men. And men is not necessarily Kanat Aisha Rajulan. That's in the biographies of Aisha. Aisha was a Rajul, a man. That's how Aisha was described. So it's not an it's not biological. But here we're talking about Maqamat stations. And stations are lofty things. They're things that don't leave, they're not fleeting, they're not like Ahwal states. That a fleeting can leave the individual, but it's when a human being becomes anchored in a reality, anchored in a reality. What's our reality? Oh, chivalrous ones, huh? You see, that's what the age needs. And we have an individual, and that's why we call out, Wa Muhammad. We have an individual that, if you want to understand qualities, because the discourse, and Futuwa is ultimately a discourse on qualities and attributes, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imprinted his pre-eternal, post-eternal attributes in a being, a created being, a lofty being, and his name is Muhammad. Salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. And when we want to understand qualities, we have to look at the possessor of qualities, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. That we want to talk about chivalry and its jami'ah, it is something which is what well comprehensive in nature. I mean, some people speak about qualities having female qualities or having male qualities, and the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imprints in creation. The ulama will use the word jamaliya, well, jalaliya, majestic and beautiful qualities or attributes. And majesty is something ordinarily that um, is related to the masculine side of the world of duality. and and Jamal or beauty is something that is related to the feminine side of things. But the beautiful thing about Futua is that Futua is the coming together of these opposites to produce a different type of attribute that the ulama called Kamalia, attributes of perfection. And it needs the women as well as it needs the men. There's a beautiful poem about akhlaq, the Jahili Arabs, the Jahili Arabs, them people who didn't have Islam, 
But they had qualities. That's one of the reasons the revelations were sent amongst them people. The Jahili Arabs, the Arabs of ignorance, wanton indivi individuals, human beings. But they wrote. And one of the things they used to write about is, the, is them great qualities that they possess and would lose their life over. You see, and this is a beautiful poem. It's called Lamiyat al-Arab. It's the Lamir of the Arabs themselves. It's like the chronicles of the Arabs. And why is it important to us? Because we have a great chivalrous one called Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. Sayyidina Umar. And he said, Allimuhu awladakum. Teach this poem to your children. Why? Fihi akhlaq. He says, in this resides attributes, lofty attributes. Attributes that we recognize as attributes that were are the attributes of the lordly one, the great one, salawat Allah wa salamu alayhi. And what's beautiful about it, you see the interplay in the beginning in his matla, in the beginning of his poem, you see the interplay between the role of the feminine, the feminine side and the role of the masculine, because both are needed in this process. And especially in the early years, when you talk about akhlaq, when they asked the Prophet وسلم, the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa innaka la ala khulqin azim, that you are beyond, not you have, you possess ala, folk, you are beyond tremendous character, salawat Allah wa salam alayhi in Surah al nun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They asked, yani, where does this come from, the, 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 the khuluq? Okay, so <clears throat> coming back to Sutul Kahab, just so that everyone is clear. So this is the fatawa. And fatawa became, uh, became you can say, a subject within the Islamic tradition of the mujahideen that uh, how can you be a mujahid on the one side and be a monk, so to say, on the other, right? So the, the idea of chivalry that you are a warrior, but at the same time, you're, you're not hard. Because what being in war does is it makes people so hard and so unin touch with reality. And so uh, it makes people incapable of dealing with relationships. But here was the idea of fatua. Fatua was that these were brothers, they were in armies, and they also had uh, more than, uh, let's say, in like, for example, in typical tasawwuf, there would be a lot of emphasis on ibadah, for example, and dhikr and dua and also ikhlaq. But over here, it was turned around. Over here, the emphasis itself was on the character, on the boldness, on the courage, on the forgiveness, on the good qualities. And then came the ibadat. So it was switched around, you can say. So, and they were young men. Okay. But again, keep in mind what the brother, subhanAllah, what he said about Aisha, anha. it's not about just biological, it's about certain characters. And then you have again this, uh, you can say, this idea of the fatua, again, in the story of. <coughs> And remember, when Musa said to his young boy, his, his servant, Fata, the young man, so Fatawa, Fatuwa, is like a certain stage, a person who has certain qualities, you can say, from a spiritual perspective. It's not just the linguistic, uh, literal meaning of the young man, right? So it's, it's, it's the young man who has attained certain qualities, right? And so the Ummah in the future is going to rely on these people, these young people that have certain qualities to bring a piece of the ummah together from different parts of the world to, uh, to let's say, the Mahdi. Okay, so, so this first phase is the phase of the Ashabul Kahf. Okay, and this can also be understood in two, three different ways, but I'm going to explain it only in maybe one, maybe I'll talk about the other, other methodology. But one is the first goal of every mu'min is to attain fatuwa and find refuge for their jama'ah, for their group, for their family, for themselves, whatever it may be. Here it's seven people, it could be a hundred people, it could be a thousand people, right? And then the second goal, now remember this is collectively, collectively there are two goals and 
two negations at the individual level. Okay, so the two goals at the individual, the collective level, the first goal is that you collectively find your refuge where you can protect your iman. That's priority number one. Okay, priority number one is protecting your iman. Okay, then when you have established yourself in the cave and you have flourished, okay, or time just passes by. Time just passed by and you just happened to keep your iman to the point where the other people reached, Islam reached other people, and now you're safe. That itself is a success. But the other goal you have is to, is to become either like Dhul Qarnayn or to reach a jama'ah that will help establish what Dhul Qarnayn did. And so then in the first story, in the last story, the relationship is... Let me show you now. And they ask you about Dhul Qarnayn because why? And I will, Allah says, mention to you something of his remembrance. We established him on earth. He was powerful on earth. He was a force to reckon with, with on earth. A force of what? A force that that the seeds of which were that fatuwa, those people of iman, but who had the courage to stand up to the king. So inna makanna lahu fil ard wa atainahu min kulli shayin sababa. And these are people who have flourished now in their villages and in in different you can say villages that went through different forms of evolution. Now they've grown to have their own technology, their own art, their own culture, their own Islam. It's well protected and they have their own army and they they are like established on earth. No one can mess with them. And they can get to any place they want to go to. So Allah says Fa'at Ba'a Sababa. So Allah gave them the ability to fo follow the causes to get to places that need to that they need to get to. In this case, different people from different parts of the world will be coming to Mecca, right? To join the army of the Mahdi. So this, now this is the two goals, right? The two goals is number one, to establish fatuwa, because we are living in a time where ibadah will be important. But what's more important than ibadah is to have the qualities of fatuwa, is to have the qualities of chivalry. Is to have the qual is to have the skills of fatwa, like how to hunt, like how to do sword fighting, like how to swim, how to you know those are the qualities that are going to be more important in the time to come. And number two, your goal coming together in the form of a jama to be strong enough to protect your iman, to have refuge for yourself and your family and your children. That's stage one. And then the ending is to now bring the forces together where now those people who have been able to protect their iman will come together to establish justice on earth to remove the tyranny that was there even if it means blocking out ya'juj and ma'juj even to that point that they will have Allah will give them the 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 the, the asbab to do away with uh, tyranny and injustice and establish justice so this is the goal you can say at the collective level, the two collective goals, or you can say the two collective priorities. Okay, now, what are the two things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to stay away from? Okay, and one of them is don't become materialistic. Don't become because Allah gave you a garden that you become now selfish. Because in that time of desperation, when you're ahead of other people, because Allah gave you something, that will be a big test. You know, how do you share with other people at a time where everyone is in a desperate situation and you have something? And if you give it up, you know, that, 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 that mode, the human mode of, of survival kicks in. Okay. وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِ And then he'll enter his garden while he's doing wrong to himself. He's going to be selfish. He's not going to want to share. He's going to look down upon other people. He's going to think like, you know, everything was going down. Everything was falling apart. 
and you know i made this investment and look how great it's turned out for me and he'll look down on other people so this is the first the first thing and the main theme of Sutul Kahf, which I'll come to inshallah if, if I remember, has to do with actually this story, which I'll share with you what that main theme is. Okay, so but this is the thing at the individual level. So two things at the collective level to do and two things to stay away from at the individual level. So this is the first one, to stay away from materialism in all of its uh, sorts. Okay, and number two, uh, to not become not to here so qala lahu musa hal attabi'uka ala an tu'allimani mimma 'allimta rushda a few lessons over here number 1 at the deeni level at the level of pure you know the fiqh of the deen okay there is the islamic law and then there is spiritual insight you need both. You need spiritual insight and you need Islamic law. The problem will come in when people have spiritual insight, but they don't apply Islamic law. And other people, as you have seen in your life, probably they're so strict on applying the law, the law, the law, the law, that they don't have spiritual insight. And why do you need spiritual insight? The more spiritual insight you have, the more you'll understand your situation. And that's the meaning of the words. How can you be patient over the thing that you don't understand? And to understand, you have to have political. To understand, you must have uh, spiritual insight. When you have spiritual uh, insight, you understand your situation. And when you have your understanding of your situation, you know how to deal with it. You have both of these. You had majma al bahar. You can say they're bringing the two of the two uh, sources of knowledge, the external and the internal. They have to be integrated. The other is that in order to survive the times of malhama, in order to survive these times of collapse, you have to be humble enough to learn from each other to have sabr with each other. Because if you don't have sabr with each other, the jama'ah will break. You can't get along. It's very easy to find it very difficult to get along with other people Allah has given knowledge of different types. You see? And this is the problem. In the Muslim world, what happens is, as uh, a person who is a muhaddis, he may have a very hard time getting along with the faqih. Because the faqih looks at things from a different perspective. A muhaddis looks at things from a different perspective. A political scientist will look at things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. A sociologist will look at things from a different perspective. And so you have to have a combining of these. You have to have sabr with one another. If you don't have sabr, you can't establish the jama'ah. Because there will always be somebody in jama'ah. There will always be somebody in authority. There will always be somebody who is above you who you, you don't completely agree with. And you just have to swallow your pride and take it. So that all of these things come together. The spiritual insight is what allows you to get along. So here's Musa. He doesn't have, like, think about this, right? That if you were in the place of Musa and you saw this man kill somebody, you'd be like, bye. Assalamu alaikum. You know, I don't like you. You're like, this is fisk. This is fujur. You have done, like, the worst sin in the world. But yet, he, as somebody who represents Sharia, meaning he represents the the ahkam of Allah, he represents the 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 revelation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He represents the Ten Commandments, so to say, that says don't kill someone. And here it is: he has to have sabr against to the very bones of what he believes in. And so, the two things don't become materialistic at the individual level. And number two, don't confuse one for the other. Okay, Don't confuse spiritual insight. Spiritual in insight is what's going to give you sabr at a time where you don't have sabr. And, and don't forget the Islamic law. The laws of justice. Okay, The laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
wala yushrik fi hukmihi ahada allah doesn't accept anyone as his partner in his law okay and i already and you already probably heard how this also relates to the different types of hijras maybe all of you heard that lecture of mine so i'm not going to repeat that right now because time is also running out but over here i wanted to mention the main theme is to go from from the people of the cave to the situation of zulqarnain this is the one connection the second connection is that stay away from materialism especially materialism especially materialism especially materialism is the main theme of the entire surah i'll show today i will show you inshallah ta'ala that part and number 2 that you have to combine spiritual insight with the sacred law the spiritual insight internally and the sacred law externally and with that how are you going to start this journey of being like the ashabul kahf it starts from having courage and being like the people of fatua okay and then when you are a people of fatua and you become selfless only then you will be able to go on to the journey of becoming and where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you to become like the people of zulqarnain okay now in regards to the main theme of the surah so let's just look at the different points in which this is said and then in the beginning and the ending how the same point is mentioned i will also mention that and then after that we'll do arabic inshallah number 1 and i'm going to point out the major points in regard to this Number one, ayah number seven. Inna ja'alna ma'ala al-ardi zina talaha. This word zina is very important in this surah. Inna ja'alna ma'ala al-ardi zina talaha. Indeed, we made whatever is on this earth a zina, a beauty. Linabluwahum to test them. Ayyuhum ahsan wa amala. To see which one of you does the best deeds. The main theme of this surah is don't get lost in the zina of this world. Don't get lost in the zina of this world. Okay. Inna ja'alna ma'alayha sa'idan jumuza. Indeed, we will make whatever is in it into fragmented into pieces. Then, continuing, I'm just going to give you the big portions and see how show you how that is the overall theme. Number ayah number twenty-eight. Was bid enough sakamar and Ladina Yadruna Rabbahum Bilvadati will not she you read Luna watch her. O Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have sober with those people who call upon their Rabb Filvadati will not she in the morning and the evening, evening you read Luna watch her who have made themselves exclusive from the face of Allah. Wala ta'adu aina ta'an whom do not remove your eyes away from them. Turidu zina tul hayat al dunya, seeking the zina, the beauty of hayat al dunya. Wala tu ta'man al falna al bahu an dikrina, and don't follow the one whose heart we have covered from our remembrance. Wa taba hawahu, and he follows his desires. Wa kana amruhu furuta, and then his affairs are just you know in ifrat and tafrid from one extreme to the next extreme. Then. Ayah number 46. Al-mal wal-banuna zinatul hayat al-dunya. Al-mal, mal, wealth and children. Zinatul hayat al-dunya. Wal-baqiyatu salihatu khayrun inda rabbika thawaban wa khayrun khayru amala. Al-mal wal-banun, wealth and children, are the zina of hayat al-dunya. Wal-baqiyatu salihat. And what will remain forever? is the good deeds. خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ It is better with your Rabb. ثَوَابًا In reward. وَخَيْرٌ amala And better in hope. Then continuing.
The same themes are mentioned here, but in without the word zinatul hayat dunya. So I'm just going to, and then I'm going to mention a few more things that will make it more clear. Now this whole part. Ayah number 101 to 110. 110. The whole thing is on this issue. Those people whose eyes are away from my dhikr. And they don't have the ability to hear in even. Why? Because they're so lost in dunya. How can they hear the words of light? Did they think that they will take my servants other than me as their protectors? Indeed, we have prepared for the people who reject the truth a hospitality. Should we? Should I tell you of the people who have done the worst of the bargains of a'mal of deeds? This again, hayat al dunya. Those whose efforts have gone astray in the life of this world. Number now, the most amazing part to me personally, wahum yahsabun, because this is what's happening today. Complete picture of what they think that they're doing. And the complete result of what's going to happen is right here. Wahum yahsabun, and they thought, they calculated, they had the algorithms all planned out. Wahum yahsabun annahum that they were what? Yuhsinun. They were making beautiful. They were making husn, something excellent. What? Sunah, manufacture. Every time there's a problem in dunya, as things begin to collapse. They oh, will manufacture this. We'll manufacture this vaccine. Now we'll manufacture this vaccine. Oh, we got another solution. We're going to manufacture this. And what is going to be the result? <laughs> the man in the garden, what happened in his garden? It's the same picture here in words. Those people whose efforts went lost in this world. Their investment went to zero in this world. Should I tell you of the people who had the worst of actions? They thought they're doing good deeds. Manufacturing their solutions. Sometimes manufacturing wars. Sometimes manufacturing consent from the people. Propaganda. Sometimes, but it's manufacturing. Okay. And why did people get lost in the manufacturing of wars? Resources, money. Why did they get lost in the manufacturing of consult, uh, in consent? Because again, dunya. Why did they uh, not be able to see that this, is a, this could be a, an obvious glaring problem in my face? Because dunya. Those people whose efforts went to zero in this world. And they were calculating what? They were calculating what a beautiful thing we're manufacturing. These are the people who have rejected the ayat of their Rabb. And meeting him. So their good deeds have come to zero. What they thought was good deeds was not good deeds. There will be no wait for them on the Day of Judgment. This will be the reward of those people who rejected the truth. Because this came at the cost of what? You did this at the cost of mocking my ayat and mocking my messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa 
because now you are living a lifestyle that is a complete antithesis of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fitrah in which he wanted to put us in. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Indeed, those who do good deeds, uh, have iman and do good deeds, كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ Nuzula, their hospitality will be in جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا لَا يَبْغُونَ عَنْهَا حِوَالَا And they will remain in there, never, their state will never change. Okay? Now, uh, so Al-Kahf ends with the same point. It starts with, don't do shirk. Don't take his servants as uh, as gods. Okay? Because in the future when there's chaos, a lot of people are going to be making a lot of claims to get power. A lot of manipulation. A lot of lies. And then finally someone will come along who will actually be able to do what he says. Make his promises come true. And will really have control over the world like magic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ Just as the Quran so Al-Kahf started with the Prophet, it is ending with the Prophet. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب الحمد لله for the one who sent down upon his servant, right, the book. And then the book, Wahi. So Wahi and the Prophet is how the so Al-Kahf starts with. Wahi and the uh, Prophet is how the Quran ends with. But it started emphasizing, started with what? Uh, emphasizing more, in the beginning, the emphasis is more on the Prophet. Over here, the more emphasis is on the Quran, on the revelation. Because in ayah number one, Allah, ayah number 109, Allah is saying, Rabbi. Okay, so the kalima of Allah. And over here, the emphasis is on the wahi. Qul, O Prophet, you say to them, Innama only, exclusively, it's just the only case. The only case is, I'm a human being just like you. But what is the difference? What is the main point? Yuha ilayhi, revelation has come to me. What? Annama ilahukum ilahu wahid. That your ilah, your God, your creator is one. Over there in the beginning, the emphasis, Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab. Alhamdulillah. Now notice also the other connection between the, the emphasis on Prophet Muhammad and using the word hamd. The word Muhammad is from hamd. Muhammad means the praised one. Muhammad is the praised one. So, ala abdihi Muhammad. Okay. So, alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab. Over here, the emphasis is on the Prophet. Over there, at the end, the emphasis is on the Quran. So, this is just something to keep in mind. Okay. So, alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. Then again, both the beginning and the end, the first ten and the last ten, they're emphasizing warning the people. We're warning you. Over here is شديد, to warn you of a great war, great difficulties. Those who do good deeds. For them is the hasana. For them is the most beautiful things. Then over here you find at the last 10, right? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُولًا And then over here you find, over there is لِيُنْذِرَ بَعْسًا شَدِيدًا And over here you find in ayah number 104, that same thing, لِيُنْذِرَ بَعْسًا شَدِيدًا Where human beings will just fight with one another. Okay. الَّذِي ظَلَّ سَعْيَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Those people whose efforts went zero in this world. You'll end up just fighting one another. Because you want to manufacture the best weapons. You want to manufacture the best solutions. So all of this will happen. Okay, And then, why did all this happen? <laughs> it all started with, you didn't have the remembrance of Allah. 
أَفَحَسِبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Over there it is قَالُوا اتَّخَزَ اللَّهُ وَلَدَ They say Allah has adapted a son. Over here it is, ayah number 102, أَفَحَسِبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا مِنْ عِبَادِ مِنْ دُونِ أَوْلِيَا Did they think, those who did, rejected the truth, أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا that they would take, قَالُوا اتَّخَزَ Same word, اتَّخَزَ أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا they will take ibadi, my servant, min duni, other than me, awliya, as protector. Inna a'tadna jahannama lil kafirina nuzula. Then we have certainly prepared a hellfire for the people who reject the truth as hospitality for them. And then what will be the end result? Over there is, qayyiman niyundira ba'san shadidan min ladunhu. Over here is, qul hal nunabbi'ukum bil akhsanina a'mala alladhi dhalla sa'yahum fil hayat al-dunya. Those whose efforts went to zero in this world, even though they thought they were going to get to something, like the Prophet said, 99 out of 100 will die, we're trying to reach the treasures, okay? And, and there will be a treasure that will be discovered in a time where there's no resources, and everyone will fight over it, 99 out of 100 will die. So this is what's going to, you know, happen. And to reach that resources, to reach there, they'll have manufacture this method, or that method, or that strategy, or this thing, or that object. And they'll be fighting with each other. And all this will happen. Why? Because they didn't listen to the Prophet. The Prophet said, stay away from this. The reward will be the hellfire. Okay. Now, inshallah, we've done enough of this. Now, let's...